January 6th may have become synonymous with something that happened in America that we won't get into. (laughs) But long before any capital was stormed, here in Ireland, January 6th has always been an important date. January 6th is known to the rest of the world as the 12th day of Christmas, but here in Ireland, the land of saints and scholars, it's known as Nolugna Man, which translates in English to Women's Christmas. Yes, Irish has its own language. Yes, we have our own language. It's called Irish. Yes, it's derived from Gaelic. The Irish word for it is Gaelga and the English word for it is Irish. Clear? Good. Okay, let's do this. We don't speak it because we were colonized by the English, forced to speak English. It was made illegal to speak Irish. A lot of our traditions and our language only survived through being taught in hedges, in literal hedges. They were called hedge schools. And that is a whole other video for another day. Back to women's Christmas. Other names for January 6th around the world include Little Christmas, Old Christmas, the the Twelfth Night. I won't be getting into the like 1500s history of the day and the Roman Catholic Church adopting the Gregorian calendar. But if you want to read more on that, there's a link down in the description to the Wikipedia article on it. In Ireland, traditionally, January 6th was seen as a rest day for the women of the country. As a reward for all their hard work over the Christmas period, it was a day off from all labour for the women of Ireland. Traditional roles were reversed on this day. Men took on all of the housework while women gathered in social gatherings, shared tea and cake. I'm using quotation marks, by the way, because the idea of Nolagna Man is a little bit outdated, as is the way in which you explain what it was. I don't subscribe to the idea of women's work per se, but I do still recognize that even in modern Ireland and around the world, The lion's share of the labor around festive periods and Christmas, things like organizing, cooking, cleaning, will automatically fall on the shoulders of the woman of the house, the bananchi, and the female relatives. Traditionally, on Nolagna Man, women called over to each other's houses and shared things like tea and cake. They'd essentially be enjoying the leftovers from Christmas Day, whereas the rest of the family got to kick back on real Christmas Day and enjoy fresh stuff. According to the Irish Examiner, there was even a phrase used to describe this, which was Nolagna Man, Nolagan Ma, which means women's Christmas, no good Christmas. It is apparently still unlucky to take down the Christmas decorations before January 6th in Ireland. Oops. According to RTE, there was a number of other customs on this day that today sound kind of weird. For example, on this day in some parts of the country, mothers rubbed the tail of a herring across the eyes of their child to give immunity against disease for the rest of the year. It was also believed that one should have the floor swept and a bucket of clean water ready before going to bed that night and that the water from that bucket should never be used in the morning. That one makes literally no sense to me. I actually don't even really understand that one. A curious belief was that all the well water in Ireland was said to turn into wine at midnight on Little Christmas, but nobody was permitted to go out to observe it or to sample the water. (laughs) How do you know it's wine then? At midnight on Christmas Eve, also farm animals were believed to have had the power of human speech, but a terrible fate awaited those who spied on them. That one's not technically relevant to Nolagna Man, but I thought it was too funny to not include. The same article also delves into some more serious Irish customs to do with death. The Irish love a good death custom. The Irish love death. Love talking about it. (laughs) Love engaging with it. Love participating in it. (laughs) We're a morbid people. Women's Christmas was also associated with the Irish death divination customs that were practiced at Halloween. One tradition is that a cake of mother clay was made and candles named for the family members of the house was placed into it. The order in which the candles burned out indicated the order in which the owners of the candles would die. (laughs) How amazingly dark is that? So Irish. Being incredibly morbid is our favourite. According then to the Irish examiner, Nolagna Man comes from Cork. And Kerry, with Dingle being singled out in particular, Galway also got a shout out as practicing Nolagna Man. Reading between the lines, I believe that when they talked about certain parts of the country claiming they'd never heard of Nolagna Man, I think they're talking about Dublin. They're almost always talking about Dublin. 
Historian Dr. Marion McGarry told the Irish Examiner that in West Kerry, it was common for women to raise half a dozen turkeys and sell them at the Christmas market to pay for provisions. And if there was anything left over after Christmas, they would spend it on themselves come January 6th. Other notable events in history that happened on January 6th include Iha Nguiha Mora, which means Night of the Big Wind, which was a night in 1839 where Ireland was hit with a hurricane that left over 100 people dead and thousands homeless. See, historically, it was really rare for Ireland to get extreme weather events. So rare, in fact. We gave them names. Ihanaguihamora. Nolignaman went out of style in its traditional form around the 1950s and doesn't really have a place in modern Ireland per se, although it has been co-opted in later years as a marketing tactic for cafes and restaurants to sell dinner menus and bottomless Prosecco brunches. In more recent years, Irish women are also utilizing the day, reclaiming it, using it as a day for sisterhood, to promote women's healthcare and organize events. There are often culture events on January 6th. So for example, the Irish Writers' Centre do Nolignaman celebratory events where they bring a lot of women together for various different talks. And then they also do a literary Chris Kindle. So you bring a book by a female author wrapped, give it to somebody else. If you bring a book, you get one to take home with you. That's obviously not all. There are loads of Nolignaman events on. Links are down in the description if you want to go check some out. Speaking of which, links to the articles mentioned are down below in the description. If you like these kind of videos and you would be interested in me making more of these, please give the video a like and a comment for the algorithm. If you want to support the channel and also get access to things like exclusive content, behind the scenes content, members only live streams, merch discounts, early access to YouTube videos and more, click the link down below in the description to join. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Slon, slon.